All right. Um, yeah. So again, welcome back. It's kind of weird because I have this. Uh, this is my first time recording on this uh, MacBook. Hold on a second. I feel like the camera needs to be cleaned off. Okay, so this is my first time like recording like this on this MacBook, but both of my phones are dead right now. <laughs> so this is all I could kind of do. All right, because I didn't want to finish this. I didn't want it to be something that I didn't finish today. I think it's only just like a, a little bit left anyways. So again, um, this is the story about Leafy Anderson. It just happens to mention something about Queen Esther in here. I thought that was kind of strange that they just threw that in there. And again, this is the story that we're following due to the fact that uh, I was going to say a school, but that's where fish travel in. <laughs> uh, but a flock of <clears throat> white hawks or red-shouldered hawks, I believe, <laughs> um, ended up meeting me when I went outside today. And I got to watch them, you know, flying around in the you know, sky for a little bit. It was kind of cool. I don't know. It was like, we're going to go into the meaning of it. Oh, okay. I'm going to sneeze. We're going to go into the meaning. I'm sorry. The meaning of it. It's that nose ring. We're going to go into the meaning of it. Um, you know, what it symbolizes supposedly in spirituality. Again, you can, you know, discern it however you want to see it. Um, but it is like representing moving up in a direction okay um so yeah so it says church uh flourishes in new orleans right so okay on october 25th 1920 anderson was able to get a louisiana state charter for her organization which eventually occupied occupied eternal life christian now oh when i when i was looking at leafy leafy anderson mm, i was looking at some other some other information right um because when i was doing genealogy i was wondering why uh, you know it was re leading me back to louisiana with some things um but it wasn't anything that stuck but what did stick is certain other <laughs> um energies that i felt like i was picking up when i was doing research on that on, on pele right um because again with the names um of my grandmother and great grandmother um you know i guess it goes back and i was talking about that during one of these stories when we we're talking about the book of esther and how like it has something to do with like uh i guess colonial times um people that were coming in you know from the pacific and um hawaii and also being brought into boarding schools and stuff like that. And so again, I think that, it, it, I don't know, I just think that there's some kind of ties when it comes to um, Hawaii with my my grandmother on my, yeah, my grandmother on my dad's side. Um, and also that's where I think the uh, Irish uh, blood lays as well. So, um, okay, but let's see, oh, something about it. Oh, like the energies of Pele and then the sister, you know, that was trying to take her, you know, uh, boyfriend or I don't like, again, you should look up the story. It's a really good story, <laughs> but I don't want to get a sidetrack, um, which made her mad or whatever, but you know, like. I don't know. Like when I was looking at that energy, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Like sometimes I felt like I can resonate with the Pele energy and sometimes I could resonate with what the sister was doing. But it was just something that drew me back to some family lines that were, I felt connected to or ran alongside one of my family lines. Um, and it was just something that I was picking up there. Mm, about like a group of individuals at that time and the p individuals in that storyline surrounding it and what was happening reminded me of these people um and i think even some of the names resem were resembled if not were the same surname or whatever as you know uh 
yeah, who I thought it was. Because <laughs> it's funny. It's just like I can sense things about people. I don't know. And it just was making me think of like this whole reincarnation story. <laughs> Especially when it comes to uh, Pele and the sister. So I was picking up on her energy and that energy and also an energy, again, of another uh, feminine energy. Um, so let's see. Mm, Occupy Eternal Life Christian Spiritualist Church number 12 on Amelia Street. She said to have experienced uh, considerable difficulty obtaining official recognition. Um, at one point, she was under police surveillance. Mm, wow. Mm. I wonder if that could like be like FBI or CIA or something today. You know? <laughs> I'm just wondering, yeah. And even jailed. Wow. Mm. See? And I think that, like, this whole thing that's going on right now is, like, that's what I feel like is going on, that somebody wants me in some big trouble. <laughs> and I, just, I sense the energy. It's just like, what the hell? What do you want from me? Like, leave me alone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody's trying to get me, like, into some kind of stumbling block or something so that they can like have control because I won't stop or don't do what I do. I don't know. It's weird. Mm. I don't know why it's stopping like this. Well, y'all just gonna have to look at that crazy picture because <laughs> the, the still rolling. So you just gonna have to look at it like that, I guess. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so even that whole thing about jailing, like, we have to realize today they're not going to, like, go into neighborhoods right away, right, if something were to jump off, right, and just drag people right out of their houses and everything like that. No. First, they have to turn the community and other groups against you, right, find things to pick on to overly, you know, as if they're not general things that everyone talks about, Um it's just they don't like the boldness or something about it, I feel, or that warrior energy, especially when it comes to women, so-called of color, that don't, you know, that go against the grain. It's a challenge, I think, right? Um, to be in this so-called man's world and not, you know, and somebody feel like they can't have rain when it ain't even, it didn't even have to be about control. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Why does it have to be like, when it comes to somebody's individuality, like that's just a kind of ridiculous, okay? Um, so it says, it is claimed that she overcame her difficulties by giving a reading to the judge and telling him things about her himself that were not widely known. Whoo, so that's almost like the energy that we're talking about in this book, <laughs> right? Like even we're talking about like, um, you know, these uh, doctors and stuff that were in there talking to Esther and being the judge of if she should go in, all these men, you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing about that energy that I don't like. And that's not what all, but just, and even I think somebody that I kind of respect said it, that we, you know, talked about recently. Um, it, it's just like, kind of like the right to choose. Mm, and then also like, uh, That whole thing, like if a woman refuses to open up to many, you know, people will either make up stuff or, again, send that energy towards you or, you know, they will not want to deal with you and call you difficult because you don't want to engage in anything but what you're doing. And, and so I feel like, again, that's how, again, people can get downcast or overthrown or downtrodden in, in a sense, possibly, right? Hmm. Yeah. And some people just don't like to hear things from women, you know, like, so you can kind of mm, tell um, that were not widely known. Okay. Her church developed a large congregation and both blacks and whites visited her for readings. Okay. So, you know, this reminds me of the storyline in, uh, I used to watch a lot of TV and a lot, a lot of movies. <laughs> um, the West World, okay? Remember the girl, she kind of woke up 
from everything. And she had uh, started to have these like glitches and she remembered a little girl. And so she kind of went in. So again, you know, it's even making me think about that Elon Musk energy of like, you know, AI taking over. You know, it just makes me think or just like even making mention of that people are already maybe altered, right? And so it just makes me think about like nobody, like even if that is the case, if without your understanding, then, you know, like, how, so now, like, then we could just, I don't know. Could it come to a time when you can just deactivate or demolish? You see what I'm saying? An individual? Hmm. I don't know. Or make it seem dangerous. And like I'm, I'm saying, when it comes to this this energy with with a, a, a man driven industry with having to do with women, monitoring women or anything, you already know. You already know at some point in time, somebody going to do some stupid stuff. Somebody is going to get some ideas. And you, do you see what I'm saying? How it could turn into a situation, especially if you're not aware that this is happening. If you're not aware that people are actually recording you. Could we have a situation even when someone may, even a female or an enemy may become, hmm, you see, and you don't even know. I'm just saying. Or just like they said, um, even in that video, I think when they were talking about AI, because somebody could actually lose possession of that. And then it could, he was saying it could be used. But like I said, a lot of this is also that energy that I feel like, you know, it was all a good deal and everything like that for some people. And some people were warning against, yes. And I wonder if this is something that has been done to certain people, you know? And then it just makes me wonder, like, so then, you know, it's like that all witch hunt, witch hunt energy. Mm. To just like everything that's happening, kind of like, it seemed like it's like in the harnessing, nowadays it's, it's harnessing feminine energy. Like, even when they talk about the vid, right? You know, we know Earth has to do with the, you know, global uh, warming and stuff like that and climate change. We know women are stepping into their unique abilities and powers right now. That makes certain people uncomfortable, even other women that may be used to getting things their way and other people come in. I mean, that can go either way, right? Um, so again, and that's what the whole thing about idolatry I feel like we're talking about a feminine God, I mean, or goddess. And, you know, possibly that warning of don't worship any other gods because women do have the power in a sense, right? So that's what um, I think um, 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 a man's world makes sure that they can control the narrative when it comes to women <laughs> and even... Mm, to even persuade to like, again, it's easy to target, I see, I feel. And especially if there is some kind of connection with someone and other people, you know, they find something else to, and then it becomes all her fault. Like the whole thing with Adam, I was just reading that again. I'm like, wait a minute, this is Adam's doing, hold on. The way I'm reading this, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? But again, we do know that they made them Adam, uh, both male and female, right? And he called them Adam. So again, this is however you want to look at it. But I was looking at it a little bit different. I'm like, hold on, Adam is not like no innocent, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, if I'm really reading this right, mm-hmm, <laughs> right? Because he was out there looking and testing out all the animals. Now, I'm not saying it like that, right? But again, we can look at animal in etymology and we get people, okay? So again, this is what I'm saying about groups of people and everything like this, bloodlines. <laughs> okay, so, all right, let's keep going, y'all. I just like to pack a bunch of just like basic stuff, whatever. Just trigger thought, okay? 
All right, so 1920s and 30s. So, mm, okay, so that's kind of funny because, like, yeah, yeah that's the same time as the whole uh, storyline of that story. I hope you guys can still see. I'm trying to move this over here. Hold on, let me. Okay. Let's see. All right, there we go. <sighs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did we? Hmm. Okay, so yeah, we're still on this side. Um, I, I don't know. I like, the, even the words are little on the phone. I don't know. It's something about doing it on the phone. Okay. So again, um, interracial congregation that drew large numbers of Italian Americans. Not only were Anderson's readings popular, her training class also enrolled some 80 aspiring leaders. Her first year of classes seemed to have earned her $1,500. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so again, Jacobs. Ah, here we go with this Jacob in this grave in this area, and this is like, yeah, mm -hmm. at the spring. <laughs> mm. We're trying to feel like we're trying to figure out also who had the juice. <laughs> Caslo lists mothers L. Crozier, Lena. Scovoto, Alice Mancuso, Dora Tyson, and Bessie S. Johnson. There we go with Johnson, Johnson and Johnson. There we go with Johnson also in that book. I'm just saying. <laughs> the father of Lloyd Thomas as being noted followers of Anderson. And I noticed that this, there's a lot of name changes, spellings and things like that when we go back and we look in this story and his story, even in the biblical text. Like some of the times I feel like, yeah, we're talking about the same individual. The name is just spelled different because you're dealing with probably a different group of people, a different particular God. And so it's going to be, you know, written different or pronounced different. But I think that, again, with migration, a lot of people were changing their names or assuming the identity of others. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. To be careful about who you give your information to. That should just be always right. I know it's easy for certain people to access stuff, and that's the scary part, too, because people are selling information all the time to, you know, third party, you know, again, without your, right? So, <clears throat> okay, so being followers of Anderson and Mother Catherine Seals um, also trained with Anderson, uh, talent quotes, a mother, Doris, uh, Dora Tyson, who was the head of her own church and also in Anderson's first class as saying, there was 85 to 100 of us in her first class and she charged a dollar a lesson. She taught healing and uh, prophesying. <laughs> yeah, say yin. Um, and calling. Mm -hmm, with the N. Up spirits. Mm. Of course, most of um. So I'm guessing it's like, yeah, of course, most of them <laughs> don't ever finish because everybody ain't got that power. Mm. Who did? Well, I'm trying to figure out which one of my guys <laughs> or my ancestors sent this to me today. Stop. Y'all just trying to get, you just thought that, see, mm, they love me. <laughs> um. Okay. But most of the mothers in New Orleans now learn that they know from Mother Anderson. So I was watching a video today, and this is what I'm saying about Source showing me. Like, um, I didn't realize about this connection, but I feel like when I seen, okay, when my, I put the video, right? Now, we've already mentioned, you know, like I said, I can sense energy coming from. I say the places, but the individuals are from those places. And sometimes it's just like, I don't know. All right. But I did notice, like I said, that even just being connected to certain people can transfer energy and power. I have ways of <laughs> that 
I can't talk too much again. Like, cause what if I need to do this for a living one day, right? So. But source already let me know that I gave you something and I'm asked, that's why you seek and share because I gave it to you to share it to a certain extent, right? But the thing that I see is that it's easy for someone to obtain that information and then throw you under the bus. So again, now I have to look at the way I do and what I do differently because, you know, I think others have been trying to dictate the amount of um, exposure that I'm getting. So my exposure, I know I've changed. I know it's gotten a little bit better, right? But my exposure has gone down because like I said, I think that there is something with the, the channel. It's been already whatever. So for them to give me a strike over something silly the other day, it, it just, just further, you know, after the 31st when they withdrew. And so women can't speak, gotta wear a mask, can't learn, can't teach. In America, so what are we really talking about? You know, and my daughter called me concerned about a lot of deaths that are happening in a small town that are just strange. She just called me this morning and was like, it's just strange, another one, another one, another one. Mm. It's just sad. Like, and even doing this, you know, I feel bad, like not even being able to be involved with like regular things or just like my energy is just off. I have to be like obedient, I feel, to it. And, you know, people not really understanding some things sometimes, but, you know, like I have a lot, you know, on my mind. I think about, like, I'm. it's hard for me to like express things, but, you know, when it comes to tragedy and stuff like that, I harness it differently. It's like a, a, a zone, a healing zone that I go into to send the energy out, you know? And like a lot of this kind of like consumes me sometimes uh, looking into things and where I feel like I am kind of like not available, you know, but just to think about that, that young people are uh, passing over like silly things or even what is it? What else is going on? Um, I guess they said that some girls were abducted, uh, like five girls were abducted from Kenosha. Wisconsin, you know, and you know, it's just some things. And I just feel like it's that harvest energy. And again, since we're going to be focusing, they're going to, again, spend like another two weeks just showing us, and this is not to sound inconsiderate. This is not to sound inconsiderate because again, that plays on your brain. It plays on your emotions when you sit there and watch these tragic things all the time. Like, but again, when you speak about truth and it sounds tragic to others, you shouldn't spend time doing that. But again, everything, you know, <laughs> that is given to the masses is normally that. <laughs> they honor who they choose to honor. and focus on what they choose to focus on, what they want you to think. And again, to keep you in that type of energy. So, um, so again, this is what I'm talking about, like with the Build the Being workshop. So I, I can tell like, even with energy, like whether divine masculines know it or not, that again, I'm not saying that nobody had it, but I think that again, being in touch with, it's almost like touching Jesus's coat, right? Or Yeshua's coat. There's something there. So it's, it's funny that we're talking about a contagion mm -hmm. and plagues and stuff like that in, in the text, the biblical text and I don't know. So a few contemporary printed uh, sources about an Anderson and the movement, uh, but the 1926 Eternal Life Spiritual Church Association Convention did receive uh, press coverage in the Louisiana uh, Weekly, December 4th. Like these dates are kicking me in my gut every time I say them because like March, Dece mm, it's making me think about last year before I went on this part of this journey. 
as reported by Jacobs and Caslow, Caslow um, two special events highlighted the conference since the convention took place near Thanksgiving. Um, there was a skit about the Mayflower complete with spirit messages from the ship. Uh, later during the final session, there was a special uh, Black Hawk service. Mm. During the Anderson pre uh, presented four spirits, Father Jones, White Hawk, and the Virginia Mary, and finally Black Hawk. Um, the only other contemporary source for church activities found, it, uh, found by Jacobs in uh, case law tells of the lit literature uh, given by white spiritual leader D.R. or Dr. F. Robertson of Lilydale, New York in early 1927. On this occasion, there was also another dramatic presentation, a white man's sin and a squaw. Didn't we say something about the squaw? Mm. And a, a white man's sin and a squaw's revenge. Whoo. <laughs> Anderson played the woman who was taken possession of by a powerful spirit. <gasps> Look, y'all. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all know I don't edit nothing. We ain't doing none of that. We're about to find out who it is, what it is, what it do. <laughs> okay. So it says Anderson's activities were um, lucrative from the beginning. So it's, again, a powerful spirit. Could this be dealing with the great spirit? We do have AI in the Bible. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. Let's see. Okay, I'm getting a little bit excited but nervous at the same time. Okay, Anderson's activities were lucrative from the beginning. Okay, New Orleans, um, of her work in New Orleans. Um, and according to Jacobs and Caslo, she dressed lavishly, favoring uh, lace. Excuse me, don't do that, please. <laughs> okay, um, close my door, please. Uh, lots of jewelry <laughs> on her dress for church service. Talent cities, Mother Doris, who said, sometimes she wore all white, wit. She said, wit, <laughs> a purple veil. But other times she wore a gold gown, wit, a black hawk mantle over her shoulders. It had a uh, picture of black hawk sold on it. Once in a while, she wore a man's full dress suit, but that was only for special occasions. Church service, classes, and readings were not Anderson's only source of income. Additional fundraisers, including parties on the roof of the building, featuring dancing and jazz bands, mm. dances including the shimmy and the jitterbug. <laughs> This reminds me of a place. And actually I went there to stay there while I was reading this book because I was just going through something y'all. When I was going, when I first got in that book and I started seeing what I was seeing and sensing energy around me when I came into it, where I would stop trying to hide whatever it was that I was maybe neglecting when I was a little girl and it just kind of brought me into that. It was a time. And the same thing like Esther. To be honest with you, just because we're going to just keep it all the way real, right? For like at least a week, two, maybe even a month. It could have been about a month where I was going through it in the house. It was, you know, it was bad. And people were talking. They didn't understand. So they were talking about certain things. And I think just out of spite because they were afraid because they saw the changes. I'm doing a lot of moving and talking. <laughs> Okay, so let me stop. Okay, so again, I think that was just really due to, again, the, all the enhanced gifts. Also, um, you know, the overwhelming downloads. Um, 
saying that I'm connecting with certain individuals, right? Expressing that in a way to people that didn't understand, you know, I think that that scared them. And plus also focusing like, cause I was coming off of full-time mom for, for children and a grandbaby. But then again, you know, like I said, it was just hectic around here. Everybody was already, you know, at that point where they were going to be moving out and everything. So, you know, it was just a lot of, you know, it was a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So, um, but I was never worried. You know what I'm saying? I knew it was something spiritual, you know, but I was overwhelmed, I think at some point. And then I think just knowing that family is saying that or them like pulling to the side, talking about stuff and talking about what other people, you know what I'm saying? It just was like a little bit annoying to me. But then, you know, like I said, I said, okay, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> and, you know, I got back grounded. I had to bring myself back. And again, I think that's just, we, we go through things in life to get us to certain places. And sometimes we look at the bad things and we say, well, damn, you know, but sometimes those particular, excuse me, sorry, uh, things had to happen to, again, build you end because it's different when source is building a being rather than the lord god or someone else building beings because <laughs> it's just a natural thing he's giving you this gift to share when man decides to create idols and take from someone with that whole copycat mentality and then pull them above and bury the other i'm gonna keep on saying it over and over again because i see it i mean i see it very clearly Right? And you know, what am I gonna do? <laughs> Speak, watch out. Cause I don't know, you might be in there because the, the rest of it is here behind the thing. So just don't come that close. Okay, hold on one second. Why don't you put the oven on so I can make one of those pizzas? Okay. No, I'm almost done with this and I'll let you have it. My phone should be charged up by then. Uh. So yeah, <clears throat> all right, and it says, um, what else? So yeah, this is reminding me of a place, like I said, okay? And it says, Mother Leafy Anderson's death was announced on the front page of the Louisiana Weekly of December 17th. Now, December 20th, when I was going through this thing, st stood out to me, and it was actually kind of spooky what I feel like Source was telling me. So I'm not gonna repeat it here, it's just too, too much of something she had been sick for only a few days and died of you know and i think that around that time that's maybe when we even got the vid in this house i think so yeah okay she had been sick for only a few days and died of complications from a cold see i don't even want to know what source told listen linda right now her followers believe that she still appeared to them to express her wishes. And so even like, even that energy on of like, that song keeps coming on um, Pandora. Do you ever wonder why you're alone? Mm. I don't know, it just makes me think. Ah, it just does. But again, this death, are we talking like, uh, like how somebody can kill somebody off now by removing them from social media, right? Or like your, your persona, right? Meaning that we don't wanna hear anything else from this person, so they just disappear off into the cut. Or are we talking about a death? And in this case, are we in a new age? I don't know why I'm getting cane energy. Mm. Her followers believe that she still appears to them to express her wishes. Anderson, like most spiritual leaders, owned the church property, which uh, passed on to her niece, uh, a Price Bennett, a Price Bennett, who became the new pastor. 
the inventory of her estate list few assets, $36 in two banks and two um, pianos valued at $75, uh, six lot valued at $8,000. Ben okay, Bennett ran into financial difficulties in 1930, lost a building through foreclosure, and was accused by the church members of mismanaging the church funds. Despite the failure of Mother Leafy Anderson to leave a strong intuition, wait, institution behind the religious impulses she both responded to and originated are still influential. She is also an exemplar, wait, ex exemplar, <laughs> um, of the response of some black women to traditional male, do, male domination of visible leadership roles in church and organizations. So again, that's that whole thing. Like I said about like, it's just like, you know, I think source is just telling us it's time. Like I know the world is like gonna be like against this, but nah, nah, we gonna, we, it's, it's time to restore that, that type of energy, that power. Okay, so I think that, yeah, some of her sister's death and things like that. Um, there was something else in here. Hmm. Let me see. That brought me to this in the first uh, place. Uh, oh, okay, I think we did read it all already. Yeah, we read it. Okay. Okay, we, we might as well just read the rest. It's just a little bit. All right. No school for uh, black children. As a result, Anderson's mother hired a private teacher. This reaction to uh, discrimination served as an early lesson to young Naomi that determined... Uh, hold on, I feel like I'm bug-eyed over here. Um... Individuals can overcome barriers. Ironically, the white community noticed Anderson's poetic talent and unlocked the door to the public education by admitting the 12-year-old to a previously all-white school. Her mother's dreams uh, was that both of her daughters would graduate from Oberlin College, uh, the first college in the United States to admit students regardless of race and gender. However, her father did not share that dream. When his wife died during Naomi's 17 year, 17 year, he dismissed additional education for Naomi as un, uh, yeah, as unnecessary. Her mother's death and lack of opportunity to attend college were only two. Okay, so again, we're gonna go ahead and reverse this, right? Because I do feel like there's an energy that, again, when we were talking about how we, it's, it, you have to be careful when you may be a weaver with some of this stuff. And even just something about, I just see a lot of energy with children. <sighs> they already know the bloodline. They have been surveilling. Especially those who homeschool. I just say like, you know, again, I got to get things in order around here too. But like, just be like on tip top because they'll try it. Somebody could try it. And then again, being in the school where they didn't take... Don't think it's just because somebody wanted to be nice, right? It's because, again, the choicest pearls produce what? <laughs> it may have taken us a couple of generations to start realizing the gifts that our children, you know. And for me, just not being so overbearing and so in control and so, you know, direct and just like all over, like I'm big and you're small, you know what I'm saying? Letting, I try to let them express the, their selves, even though sometimes like, ooh, <laughs> but yeah, we could take that, you know? 
but mm, yeah, a brief period of time before her uh, 21st birthday, she also mourned the death of her brother and her sister. Uh, prior to her sister's death, Anderson married William Talbert, a barber from Val Valsprazio, Indiana. Mm. Several months later, she returned to Michigan City to care for her dying sister. Um, the Talberts remained in Michigan City for five years, and during the time they buried their firstborn um, a son in 1868, along with their second son and Elijah. Elijah Bowman, they moved to Chicago. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me know what you think. This, uh, this book is called Notable Black American Women, book two, uh, edited by Jesse Carney, I believe, Smith, and Cheryl Lee Phelps, um, if you want to check it out. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.